so as you guys know i've been covering a lot of the phenomenon known as virgil abloh obviously i have a um, direct relationship with the guy having worked with him a few years ago as part of this online streetwear course that i did a few years ago obviously some of you guys have seen the videos on my channel um regarding that course that i did and you know i was able to be in and around his orbit at that time see his trajectory rise from the beginning to the top um i'm pretty sure i actually found the original email that I used in order to apply for that job. Um, and I didn't know at the time, but they were already speaking to Virgil for to basically lead the streetwear course that I ended up um, co-producing. And I didn't know at the time I was applying for the role. And when I when I basically submitted my, um, what would you call it? When I submitted my brief of how I thought the course could go, I used Virgil as the lead curator. I used him as a, basically the lead kind of person on it to kind of teach the course because I thought his story and where he came up was, was, was the most interesting. And I thought his ability to maybe break down the way he came up and his trajectory and the things he's learned and the little tricks and hacks and whatnot would be a great resource for the kids coming up too because they could maybe identify themselves in him because he wasn't traditionally trained. And at that time, a lot of people didn't really like what he did. So, But he still made it despite that for just pure hard work persistence and whatnot and having a bit of an eye so i thought that would be the best person to teach because it's like football they always say the the worst coaches are always the most talented because everything to them comes a second nature so they don't think about how to control a ball they don't think about how to kick a ball they don't think about how to where to run into space it just it's all instinctive because they're really gifted and that's the the gift the lord gave them to play football but the best coaches are usually the mediocre ones or the ones that don't really make it to a professional level because they've had to work for everything they've had to study tape they've had to analyze how to place your foot when you want to control the ball how to receive if you want to control it with your left with your right where to position yourself if you're playing against a player that's faster than you they've really had to dissect the game in ways that a, more, a far more talented player wouldn't so Virgil I thought was the same sort of way where he could be a far better teacher for kids coming up because he's had to basically deconstruct a way of him to kind of make it in an area or in a sort of industry where people really valued uh, traditional education they valued um, knowing the history of fashion you know all this sort of theory stuff but the practicality i think wasn't really valued the actual being able to do stuff wasn't valued so um obviously i should have had with the guy and unfortunately you know untimely passing happened which obviously shook um my little scene and my little industry and the world really at large because i think a lot of people really took him for granted and his influence that he had um on the scene and everything i don't think i did personally i think i might have been a little bit um critical of some of the things he has done but i never really doubted his impact on what he was basically here to do i've always kind of argued and said that his impact was less to do with the clothes that he made and more so about him as a person i think the fact that he was around and showed people this is possible i kind of liken it to pharaoh when i was coming up the fact that there was somebody like him that existed in hip-hop looking the way he did making the music that he did being into what he was into basically legitimized and gave people like myself a reason to also do those things and not be looked at as like a weirdo right coming up like skateboarding riding bmx wearing colorful trainers and shoes and whatnot being into japanese stuff like all this stuff was obviously it kind of legitimized further of um what um pharrell did and obviously you can see his offspring in the case of tyler the creators have basically come from that school where he basically felt comfortable in his skin by seeing somebody that looked like him also being comfortable in their skin bloody blah 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 Anyway, the from what I've read, this is the final Vir Louis Vuitton, um, Virgil Design Louis Vuitton collection that he did. Maybe I read another article that said um, he actually designed the next season. So the, what what is that? 2023 spring, summer, I suppose it might be the actual, actual last one. But I think this is the last one from what I know. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but let me know in the comments. But I'm going to play 10 minutes of it. This is men's, um, the Louis Vuitton men's fall winter 2022 show. It was actually composed and scored, I think, by uh, Ty De Crea, if I'm not mistaken. Let's check the comments here. I'm pretty sure it was, right? The description. Yeah, music composed by Ty De Creator. And of course, they got Benji B in there to do the old Mike D thing and then Mike Dean thing and twist the knobs here and there. I think also, but anyway, let's play the video too. Um, a great way to sort of like, um, I guess somewhat put a little bit of a punctuation mark on the Virgil Abloh um, legacy at Louis Vuitton and also his ability to basically inspire people in general. So let's see what this show had to present to us and then obviously I'll move on to some other things.
there is this place I know It's something like a dream The people here don't exit that state Everything is touched by their dreaming Awake or asleep or in between Here is where it stays and where it's made Imagination has a pulse, the sort of sparkle is formed. It lets you make things happen as long as you believe they will. It's similar to fire, but with healing properties. Many people can't see it. Many don't believe their sleep dream can carry on when they're awake. The sparkle doesn't belong to any of us. Who doesn't belong to anyone. When it's all over and our time is no longer, we leave it behind for others to seek their own dreams. The others that want others in this dream. I look up and see all that was sent into the sky. Ah, oh, Bafik.
emotional shit. I'm not gonna lie. Emotional, emotional. What a lovely colour. Come on. This fits so well. This is so beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful shirt. Wow. The outfit that Alton's got on. Such a virgin look. It looks incredible, man. So well done. Don T collaboration on the hat too. Oof, look at that hoodie. I'll leave it for now here. I won't carry on too long and then we'll continue the rest of the show. But yeah, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful way to honor such a great man, honestly. Wow, so emotional. I can't imagine what that must have been like being there. I can only imagine how emotional that must have been there, especially for his friends and family and shit and the team he worked with at the time. God, what a bittersweet moment, isn't it? Because clearly, you know, this was his 
dream you know what i mean especially if you're really about this fashion life you're really about clothes having the ability to basically imbue your aesthetic at a luxury house like louis vuitton given his background given where he's from given what he represents must have been such an amazing job to have and maybe that was you know a great way to kind of close a chapter on his life in some weird way even though such an unfortunate passing and you know no no one no one you know should be dying at that sort of age you know just there's so much more to give but at least he had the ability whilst the short time he was around on this earth he was able to really 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 achieve his dreams and live his dreams you know what i mean he, he basically got to spend 10 years into or well, basically 10 years working with one of the most influential people in the world in Kanye West and then he took that and essentially built an entire career and universe around it and he ended up then going and inspiring his own set of people too it wasn't like he was just working under Kanye's shadow he took what Kanye had learned had basically you know done and he, what he learned from him the good and the bad and applied it in his own journey and then that's also going to then inspire a whole group of people who are coming up too so his influence is tenfold hundredfold a thousandfold a millionfold whatever it is it's 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 really there to to be seen and maybe now with a bit of distance and the fact that he's not here anymore and the fact that you know his influence is going to be felt for generations to come that people will maybe be a little bit more forgiving to the work and basically be able to see it through his lens a bit more um i still think his best work was what he was early on especially i think his best work was definitely um the off-white women's i thought that was some of his strongest stuff i thought the early off-white men's was really great then it got into a bit of a low period maybe he was a bit uninspired but then he then definitely in my opinion came to his um, he definitely started flexing his muscles a bit more when he started working with Louis Vuitton because clearly he had all the resources to do whatever he wanted. Anything in his head he could imagine could basically be put into reality. And he really took that and kind of ran with it to a way, in a way that you can't really deny. You know, some of these suits and the proportions and the cuts are really good, especially since he brought Ib Kamara on to help him out with the styling and maybe the refinement you can definitely see an improvement in the last few years in terms of the level that his clothes has gone to but the vision the taste level the perspective um the influence of the inspiration the references they're all just so multi-layered it's probably too deep to even get into do you know what i mean especially on my show anyway i don't really have the 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 platform that it could give that kind of um work and research that deserve the credit that it deserves but even his purple the purple the plum whatever that tone is and hue that he uses is just amazing so striking look how rich this looks without looking always cartoony the length of the trousers the little heel on the back of these boots like oof. it's all really good but of course the pierce de resistance i thought was looked at out and mason had on this is quintessential virgil this basically looks like something virgil would wear day to day such an incredibly good fit from the shoes to the cut of the pants to the cut of the varsity jacket that's something that some people don't give him credit enough to virgil made a hell of a varsity jacket he was really the varsity jacket king and he didn't do those team ones too because i hate the team ones I've already spoken about on it on the podcast how i think the team ones are basically a form of clickiness and you know um separate you know they kind of separate the core cool and the not core cool, especially in streetwear and i think streetwear has always been inclusive anybody can take part as long as they're interested but those team jackets that they don't give to certain people you get this color you get that color it's just like come on man real adults here what is this whereas i think virgil just made cool that jacket for everybody if you had the money you could pay for it you got a cool jacket um i thought they were done really really well um they look amazing you know what i mean really, really one of the most underrated pieces in a virgil um designed louis vuitton collection in my opinion but yeah big up everybody that walked the show um the music was incredible tyler the creator scored the hell out of that oh look he got his own variations i guess of the bottega veneta a lug boot everyone basically did it so you can't really get too hype on it um you can't really hate too much on it i also like the bag got little climbing um little climbing frame little climb what they call climbing frame. when you only people what the, what the, what's it called when people go do that thing is it free climbing whatever it is it's really popular these days or a fix on the side of it the car the shirt but look everything looks great everything looks amazing let's not really kid ourselves here everything looks really 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 well done this fluffy fleece looks amazing too i love the look of that fleece hoodie oh so lush but yeah man r.i.p to the great man memory will live on as always as i mentioned like similar architectural you know architects which he is you know um, classically trained in that regard 
um, his work will live on and that will be a good way for people to remember him by um, I'm sure as time goes on people will be pulling out references from stuff that they probably didn't notice in the past and that will be you know dissected and gone on and I guess his career also will also be dissected in that way people will use it as a blueprint in order to kind of um, guide themselves in their own journey oh, look at that look at the cut of this suit this whole ensemble is just brilliant isn't it this is look 38 i'm checking out if in case you're listening via the audio version of the podcast oh, just incredible 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 stuff from him man. really great way to sort of end it if it is ended like i said i'm not too sure i remember reading something that this was the last one because supposedly it was 90 95 done before he unfortunately passed away but maybe there might be some other stuff left that they're going to show on the other runway going forward and then i guess from then on they'll probably then probably announce who's going to take over but yeah look how beautiful this is man there's something so gracious about this entire fit you know but yeah emotional to say the least man i can only imagine how his friends must feel it must feel so bittersweet because they're so used to seeing the great man gallivanting and walking down the runway at the end hugging people and stuff getting them involved and that's something also i loved about him that he did about the fashion shows he really made them i wouldn't say an event but he made them he made them seem normal by just acting normal you know the fingers up running down with somebody hugging someone in a crowd fist bumping somebody it wasn't so like tense, you know what I mean? He made it so relaxed and yeah, man, inclusive and just, you know, a great place to be for people. So you can only give, look at this. There's so much symbolism you can attach to these um, looks with the angel wings attached to them, right? Uh, ascending upwards. Maybe he knew his own mortality at that time. Naomi Campbell, the legend, walking down the runway too with a snapback tie on. You can only stand, you can only stand such a shame in it such a crying shame but you know at least people would then see what he did and be able to emulate and try and use whatever experience and lessons that he left in terms of guiding them on their own little journey and like i said before for me it's just kind of really drums home the idea of just putting stuff out not being too precious about things and be willing to embarrass yourself in public be willing to fail be willing to um yeah be willing to fail basically fall flat on your face make mistakes in public that's something you have to really give virgil and kanye credit for they do that constantly kanye's first collection in paris the one he basically funded out of his own pocket and put himself on the fashion week calendar because he just wanted to take part and he loved fashion so much i remember somebody saying in a review maybe it was kathy horn or something saying just because you love fashion doesn't mean you should make it like some snarky quote i was like oof right and from what he said in an interview recently with jason lee which just came out he said something like oh christina um, centera one of the stylists who um i'm a big fan of who does her own collection too she's got this sort of like wardrobe staple thing that she does where you basically buy a, an entire pack of clothes each season which has got like a hoodie an overcoat a tracksuit pants whatever she does something really cool in that regard but she's also a stylist in her regard and she'd worked with virgil you know when he started off white i think she was still there um before his passing and maybe she took a bit more of a prominent role when he started to do more of the Louis Vuitton stuff. I'm not really too sure, but she said to Kanye something along the lines of, oh, um, they're going to laugh at you when you put this down the runway because it's so bad, isn't it? And at the time, people didn't like it, but now looking back at it, it wasn't as bad as people made it seem. And so what? It was his first try. And since then, he's basically been hitting them at the park since then in terms of Kanye. And that's something you have to give people credit for, those guys, because most people wouldn't do that. Most people wouldn't put on a show. It's like putting on an art gallery show for yeah, a show for your art in a gallery somewhere inviting loads of people and no one turns up or they do turn up and they write horrible reviews about the stuff that you do and say that you shouldn't be drawing just because you can draw you shouldn't be making art so sort of thing how hurtful that would be but those guys regardless of the odds regardless of the pushback regardless of the negativity regardless of the criticism sometimes from people that are nearest and dearest to them because like i mentioned before in other podcasts as great as virgil was in terms of an inspiration it was also quite annoying to see some of his friends who are really close to him and around him the whole entire time you know having a lot to say about him and begging him up when when it's convenient but then they wouldn't wear any clothes none of these guys were going out and buying louis vuitton design you know virgil design louis vuitton pieces for themselves they were just waiting to get you know um to get gifted or whatnot or they just or they just didn't buy it. i didn't see a lot of his friends wearing off-white for instance like as actual clothes to wear themselves they were just out there kind of you know pretending they kind of didn't see the collection or they didn't have an opinion on it but you know but then yet yeah, getting angry when people don't that didn't know him had a lot of things to say about his work because that's something that's the only thing they could talk about just his work so that was always annoying but 
again, man, you gotta give those guys credit. You know what I mean? They uh they uh they put it all out on Front Street. They weren't willing to work in secret in a studio somewhere. Everything got shipped like the it's that kind of um Apple mindset. There is no such thing as concepts, there is no such thing as renders and stuff left on PSD files. No no no. We make, we produce, we ship, we manufacture, we ship, we ship, we ship, we ship. We get that shit out there into people's hands and let them touch and feel it. And whatever response we get from people is what we get. But at least we're playing. We're in the game. We're not on the bench on the side looking from the outside in, waiting to get invited. No, no, no. I'm taking part. And that's something I've really taken away from Virgil and my my kind of short, short time I had with him, very brief time. That's what I basically took from it. Is that okay? This guy really believes his shit. He's really backing it. He's putting away his money, his money where his mouth is, and he's just showing up and doing it. I remember that was a kind of quote I remember reading of from Hiroshi Fujiwara when people were basically, I think he was responding to people basically saying he does the same thing again and again or something. And he's like, oh, people are just upset that I actually do the thing that's in my head and I try it out and I do it. They always say they could do it, but I did it first. I think it's something like that. Like they say that he could do it, but no, I'm the one that did it. And he rushed for dry, if I'm not mistaken. He was a person that invented the the kind of the little label that people put on the side of their um, shirts, on the sleeve or on the bottom of the hem, a sort of like logo thing, right? A kind of badge of honor, a sort of way to sort of give people a, a heads up of like, yeah, you know what's up. So he was saying, yeah, no, I actually do it. I don't talk about it. I do the thing. So big up Virgil for doing the thing. Big up him for inspiring people. Um, R.I.P. to a legend. Long live Virgil. Virgil forever. Um, his influence is going to be felt for generations to come, I think. Somebody basically proved the thesis that you can come from streetwear. You can screen print things. Iron on. Design flyers. Make, you know, mix tapes and whatnot. And, you know, DJ mixes. And you can ascend to the loftiest of loftiest positions working for one of the biggest luxury house fashion houses out there with all the resources having new guys group back you and your own brand let LVHM endorsements from just that kind of humble beginnings right in terms of fashion experience and design experience and be able to go to the highest of the highs he did it he really did